ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there and welcome back to yet another FileMaker tutorial where we are going to learn more about FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrowski bringing you these FileMaker tutorials from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this video tutorial, I've got 12 on-the-fly tips. I shot this video right around Christmas time of 2020, so this is 12 tips for beginners. And even if you aren't a beginner, you may get something out of this. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. All right, to start things off, my tip number one is that FileMaker is absolutely wonderful for converting any type of pre-formatted data. I happen to be on the data.gov website, and I'm just going to download something that is on this website. Uh, right off the top, up at the top here, they've got uh, health data, uh, data. I'm going to go ahead and download this. It will download into my downloads. Um, we'll see this progress right there. And the only reason I'm doing this on the fly is just to show you real time how quick it is to get data into FileMaker. Now, I've got two folders. I've got my application folder with FileMaker right there. And then I've got that download folder, uh, folder that things downloaded into and it's right there. You just drag that right onto FileMaker. It will come up with the dialog, the prompt to convert that. I'll go ahead and just throw it right on my desktop here. We'll click save. And with the import dialog, all you have to do is simply choose this option, use as field names. In this case, the comma separated value came in. And normally FileMaker will have this F1, F2, which is basically field one, two, three, four, five, whatever. But as soon as we use field names, which is the first thing, it will simply create the field names for you. In fact, as I convert this and it does it so quickly, one of the things that I do is I will convert data just in order to get FileMaker to create the fields for me. Because why not? That's just so much easier than me manually typing them in. If you have headers in a comma separated value file, just drag it in, let FileMaker make the fields from that file, even if you don't need the data. And if you do need the data, it is super quick in order to import. And that is tip number one. Okay, for tip number two, I suggest that you give yourself a dedicated layout. These are developer tips, so as a developer, you need your own layout just as much as the user does. So I've converted this file, and normally what I would go in is I would uh, modify this layout. I'll go ahead and do that and bring that up. Actually, that's the wrong one. I want the layouts, layout setup. I'm going to go into this. I'll go into the views. I know that this user is pretty much only ever going to be using this as a form view. And I'm going to switch it to form view. Typically, turn off list, turn off table, and leave form as the only view. But... I like to have table view. So before I do that, what I'm going to do is go into manage layouts. We can see that I've got two of them. I don't know why it created two of them here. In fact, let's go ahead and open both of those and take a look at them. Oh, we can see that it did create a form view. That may be something new in FileMaker. It used to be that FileMaker would only ever create one layout. I'm going to have to test that out here in FileMaker 19 to see whether that's the case. But if that's the case, FileMaker is really anticipating that nice import. In fact, let's go take a look at this table, this layout. Go look at our layout setup and look at our views. And no, this, this layout as well actually has, and we'll look at this one, this layout setup, look at its views. Both of them have all of the options set. Now, I don't like to have all options set for a particular layout. I like to have layouts dedicated to their particular thing. So I like a table view for myself and then a form view for the user. In this particular case, it looks like FileMaker created the two layouts, but what I was telling you for tip number two is give yourself a dedicated layout. So in your define database where we have our manage relationships, one of the things I used to do in the past is I would used to create a dedicated table occurrence such as this, and I would call it something to the effect of at uh, whatever the name of the table occurrence is. And I would leave that. Well, I'm doing things a little bit differently. This would be unconnected or not connected to anything. Now what I'm doing is if I have a, a group of connections and I'll just create a, a equal join here between these two, if this is represents my solution, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a dedicated layout off of the layout where the user is using this solution. So in this scenario, this table is this particular layout right here. I haven't arranged it and moved things around in the right place, but I would in the layout setup, in this case, because it was converted, have gone and turned off these and said the default was form view. User can't switch out of form view now, but I will definitely, if it does not exist, give myself a dedicated layout. So that may come in the form of going in, selecting the layout that you want, and then clicking the duplicate option in order to give yourself yet another layout. And on that particular layout, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use table mode. So for this particular layout, when I go to the layout setup, we're going to go to the views and I will leave, as a developer, I'll typically leave all of them on. You don't have to, but we're going to see why coming up in tip number three, why I like table view for development. All right, for tip number three, I suggest that if you have not already done it, become used to using table view for the purpose of development. Now there's multiple places that you can modify and edit fields. If I go into define database, this was my standby. Going back all the way to the 90s when I learned FileMaker, this was the only place where you could make your modifications to any of your fields or any of your schemas. So if I wanted state to be a number, well, let's pick something better. Let's pick the zip code. If I wanted that to be a number, I would have to uh, select right here to choose number and then click OK and do that for any of the fields that I want. FileMaker provides multiple ways to do that and table view happens to be one of the easiest ways to do that. Now when we go into Define Database we can see that as we imported this FileMaker pretty much made most everything text. That is not going to work with this particular data because a lot of it is numerical data. So as I scroll over to the side here, we can see everywhere where there is numerical data, the easiest thing for me to do is to simply change it right here. We can see that we have a couple of options down at the bottom. We have this field and we have this table view. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up table view for me to work and that is going to be in the form of edit properties. This is just a quick way to get into the layout properties which will give us the ability to do this. We are going to go in and I turn on the top, the header, the footer, and the bottom navigation. All of these are useful for me as a developer in order to store buttons or information about this table. I also don't like such a heavy grid line. If you like that a little bit lighter, then go ahead and select and make a light gray. And if you have pictures, you can also use this option right here, use custom height, if you've got uh, containers that you wanna be able to see a larger image for you as the developer. With all of those changes on, we can see that we get all of that content. Let me go into layout mode really quickly. And I am going to simply uh, scroll all the way to the side. We can see that there were so many fields that came in here. I'm just going to drag and drag, uh, copy all of that or get rid of that. And then this is where I can put in information that is relevant to me as the developer. And we can put that in and make it a nice white. Here, we'll change the font color to a white. And I can say information about this table. In fact, notes and all kinds of stuff is what I like to do. More importantly, I like to be able to put buttons here that are a developer button. Developer button that does something. In many cases, this is going to be a, um, I don't know where that button went. Let's see if that is going to stay there. Put in my standard beep. And I don't know why that button, oh, that button is transparent. It is, it's there, but it's transparent. Very interesting. This uh, theme from FileMaker, which I happen to have <laughs> designed, um, is showing a button that is the same color as the header. That's really funny. There we go, developer button. So it was, <laughs> that was the fact that the default button for this particular, for within the header comes out to be transparent. But here's where I can have my information, I can have my developer button, but more importantly, I can add fields and change the fields here in this developer table view. So if I scroll over and the first number that I get to, if I want this to be a number, just like I did with the table view edit properties, I can go to the field and actually just change the field type really quickly by just making the selection like that. That is so much easier than going in saying, uh, I want ICU patients confirmed influenza, yeah, that's gonna be a number, and click change. 
go into patients that one's going to be a number and click change nope i just hover over this right here and i say field type number done there's one other way that you can change fields it's pretty easy when you are in layout mode within the uh, inspector over here where we see the fields this is probably the third area where you can select, uh, select and just change this into whatever type you want. So the two ways that are the easiest without having going going into the manage uh, database are in table view and then also in uh, while you're in layouts, uh, layout view. So remember all of those settings. If you want a new field, this is super long. This happens to be super long, but the little plus right here at the end is very helpful for adding a new field. And then if you need to change that, you just simply select on this or right there, we'll do that so that I can see it. We go to field, and then you can go to field type. You can also immediately access your field options. Uh, so that is one reason that I really like table view for development purposes. So on to tip number four. All right, tip number four is a really easy one, but maybe you're not doing it as much as you could or should, and that is what we have on screen right now, use multiple windows. So many times when I'm developing, I will have my main UI window that I'm going to be working on the user interface, but of course there are fields that are not shown on that layout and data that I need to access. So then I will have my developer window over here. And creating a new window is so simple, you just go up to the window menu and create a new window. The only thing you need to remember is the new window that is created will be a copy or a clone of whichever window you are looking at. So for example, if I want a copy of this one, I'm going to select this window first, then I'm going to create my new window and I'll get a copy of that. I can work on the actual layout and then have a copy of it here as I wish. So all of these windows are going to be really convenient because over here, I'm working in this my UI and I figure, oh, this isn't a number or I need to switch it. I quickly go over here, I select, I go to my field, just like we learned, I change the field type to a number, done deal. Didn't have to go down into FileMaker's dialogs. But more importantly, once you start to create a really complex solution, these window options are really helpful. Tile horizontally, tile vertically, cascade, and bring all to front. Now, in order to take most advantage of these, you're going to need to look at hide window and be able to get a window out of the way in order to see things. In fact, all of these options can be scripted, and I have created scripts for myself that automatically positions a workspace that creates the way that I need to develop as soon as I come into a solution, and it either does it automatically as part of startup, or I click a button and all of the windows are formatted. What would that look like? Well, if this was my UI, and the rest of my tables were table uh, windows I was working on, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this window, then I'm going to choose to tile my windows, and it's going to just affect the windows that are visible. Then I can go back to my show window and bring that window right up. And so what I have is I have a really nice situation where I've got my UI that I'm working on, then my development windows are behind or to the side or in another monitor even because I develop with multiple monitors. So um, off to the side here, off the screen, I would put this window off the screen, put this one onto my other monitor, then uh, organize those, and it would happen really, really nicely. So moving on, let's go to tip number five. All right, so if you've been developing for a long time, or if you haven't and you're just getting started, tip number five is use your quick searching methods, and that is simply just right clicking on fields and knowing about constrain and extend found sets and as it relates to our status area right here. So let's go through a quick example. Um, I've got this data right here. Let's say this hospital value, I want to find all critical access. All I'm going to need to do is right click on that. Actually, I need to zoom out here and then we'll zoom in a little bit so that we can see things. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to choose this option find matching records. That's going to find all matching records if I'm selected in that field and I do not have anything selected. I'll show you the enhanced version of this tip in just a second, but let's do find access or let's find all of those. FileMaker had to index that because all of this was new data. We, we, we can see that I have all of the critical access. 
Now if I want to find everything according to a particular zip code, I'm going to be able to do the same thing, but I'm going to use either my extend or my constraint. So I'm going to right click here, and I'm now going to constrain the found set. So I can continue to whittle this down or expand it out with both the constrain and the extend here to get exactly what I need. This is really important when you're developing because Many times when you put in a feature of a portal or something else that's bringing up a set of data, you want to verify that data per by performing a find with the exact criteria to make sure that you've got an exact match on the count of records. So when I constrain this, I now have a critical access constrained by this particular zip code, which is really pretty cool. Extend is going to do the opposite of constrain. I think you can play around with that. Here's the further tip. When you are going to search, let's see, I need to search for something that has a little bit of varying data. All of this is going to be numerical, isn't going to be as advantageous. We'll go ahead and cover that one after I show you the, uh, the flip, which a lot of developers don't seem to know about. So the status area here is very nice for being able to uh, work within your found set of data. We can see that we have 18. Let's say for an arbitrary reason, I wanted to go to, let's say record number 10, which I can just type in 10 here, hit the return. It puts me on record number 10. And then I wanted to get rid of all of the remaining records. Well, I can use the uh, omit multiple right here. So that is command shift T here on the Macintosh. It's probably a uh, command option or command alt or command shift T on Windows. We choose that one and we don't have to know how many records there are. I can simply put in an astronomically large number, click omit, and then FileMaker will tell me how many remaining records it has. I click OK. It puts the number in for me. I click omit and I've now whittled this set down to the nine records that I have in the found set. And here's the second tip. Knowing that this will allow you to simply select in here, go to a target number, versus actually dragging the slider. If you need the inverse found set, you simply just click this right here. So what this is going to do is it's going to flip the set and take uh, hide the nine and then show me the remainder. So you can see by doing that, I'm able to flip the set that I'm looking at. So if you get creative with your finds and you're working with a data set that's a little less than uh, 87,000 records, it becomes really easy in order to narrow down and exactly find what it is that you're looking for. So as I, I use Command or Control J there in order to find everything, let's use the address as an example of that super enhanced tip. When you're going to right click in a field for using these quick find methods, note that you can actually double click and highlight a particular value within a field. And when you right click and choose the option of find matching records, that is going to apply to just the highlighted value, not the whole field value. So it's a super user trick that uh, I didn't even know this up until I, about five years ago, but this is really pretty cool in that if I want to find everything that has the word mountain in it, you can see I was able to just do that right there. And now if I want to find everything within mountain that's in this particular zip code, I'm going to uh, do, use the constraint found set. And I've now found, well, everything happened to be in that zip code for that particular address. But had there been a mix of data, I would have found everything that included the word mountain that was also in a particular zip code. And it turns out that there's only this one hospital in this particular zip code with the word mountain, which would make sense. Moving along, for tip number six, it is take advantage of insert from index. So if you have not become familiar with it, when you're in a field, as long as that's an indexed field, FileMaker can show you all of the options for that particular field. I'm going to choose uh, the hospital name. Yeah, we'll use that one. Now, if this hasn't been indexed, which we can quickly see if it has, we'll go into the defined database. And we can see right there that hospital in a name has not already been indexed. So if I want to index that, I'm going to need to do a search on it. So I'll just uh, select Georgia here. We'll do a quick find matching records. Take everything from tip number uh, five that we just learned. We can see that this is now indexed. If that is the case and you are doing a find, a standard find, not the quick find, you go into find mode with command or control F. 
we can see that all of the fields have my little magnifying glass showing me I could search on these things. Well, if I can't remember what the name of the hospital is that I want to use, while I'm here in find mode, I can go up to, I believe, I forget where it is, insert. There it is right there. Under the insert menu, you can see that from index. Command I is a really useful tool if you can't remember what's in a field. So I hold up, I bring up command I, and there it is, the index with a list of all of the unique values that are in this field. On top of that, we've got this option, show individual words. So if you have not played with that, you could do exactly what we just did with the quick search when we double clicked and highlighted a single value within a field and then right click to perform that search. We're just doing the manual version right here. But this is also useful in the sense that if I'm entering data, let's go into browse mode, and I will say I'm creating a new record here. I get to this particular field and I forget what the name is that I want to put in here. I just hit that command I, the index comes up and I'll just type in Abilene or let's see what's down at the Z, Zachary right there. Paste it and it is in and ready to go. So that index works really well both in find mode and in data entry browse mode. For tip number seven, we are going to be using auto enter more than we are calculations. Now this doesn't always apply and it does require a little bit of experience, practice, and skill in terms of when to use this versus not when to use this, but let me give you an example. We'll go into the define database and we'll create a new value here. I'll just call it uh, total of something because this is data that I'm not familiar with. We're going to make this a calculation field which is what a lot of new developers do. I need to calculate something. I'm going to calculate this data. We're going to create this, and let's just go grab a couple of these. I'll grab this one, plus this one, plus this one. Now what happens is, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be calculating all of this, and in this case, when I click OK, and I say OK, and FileMaker does all of what it's going to do, and we go back into the defined database, scroll down to the bottom, we can see that this total of something is what's known as a stored calculation, because it isn't telling us that it's unstored. But when we develop a FileMaker solution, what happens a lot of the times is we'll add in globals, or we'll, we'll reference other calculated values, and what happens is, as I go in to edit this, and click on the storage options, we end up with sometimes a calculation that initially when we created it was intended to be stored, ends up being unstored. And so this actually gets checked automatically for you without your knowledge as soon as you reference a global field or something else that does not have the ability to have an index. So what happens now is we end up with a situation that looks like this, where we've got an unstored calculated value. And that's one of the things that starts to slow FileMaker down. So by instead of using a calculation, we simply use a number field and use that as an auto enter. You can see that when we double click, or excuse me, when we go to the type and we change it to an actual number, thinking my calculation's going to go away. No, we click change. And now we click on our options and we go over to our uh, calculated value right here on auto enter. So we're on the auto enter tab. We click on uh, calculated. Look at that. There is the exact same calculation that we had put in as a calculation when the field was a calculation. But now with the field being stored as a number with a calculated value, what's really nice is that this will get stored at the point in time that any of the referenced fields are changed or modified. So this is what it comes down to. Think about it in the uh, most simplest form. Our most simple form in all of FileMaker is a line items invoicing solution where you simply total up all of the items that are on an invoice. If you think about it, how many times is the invoice going to change? And after that invoice has been fulfilled, what do you do? You create a new invoice. You don't go back and change the old invoice. Typically, you lock it because that is a preserved instance of something that happened at a point in time. So the total, does it really need to be a calculated value? In many cases, no. It can be just a number that references all of the fields at that point in time. 
And that's what's going to make your solutions perform a lot better is using just a regular field value and then using an auto enter calculation on that as opposed to a calculation which at some point can actually become a uh, something that's not as good for your database. Although if you're really good at monitoring, you know, what your calculations show in terms of whether they show unstored or stored, then there is no problem with having a calculated value. It is essentially the exact same thing as an auto enter. And I just like auto enters. It keeps my schema clean and I have don't have a whole lot of accidental uh, calculations that might cause problems down the road. Okay, for tip number eight, it is make changes in bulk whenever possible. Now I wish this was possible. I wish we could select multiple of these fields and then go over here and change the type of the field all in one fell swoop. That would be a bulk change that I would be able to make. In the event of fields, that is, alas, not possible. But there are many other places in FileMaker where you can make bulk changes. For however many items you have selected, those items will be affected in most cases. So we can delete multiple things, align multiple things, reassign multiple things, change the colors on multiple things, and so forth. So for these fields right here, if I wanted all of them to be resized at the same time, I of course could do that with the grab handle here, and that will happen. It will take into account all of the different sizes, but you can also do that with the tools that we have over in the inspector over here on the side. Many of these tools will take and affect a lot of objects at the same time. So in this case, if I align all of these, notice that what happened is you can see that all of the size values stayed gray except for the left. It became black, where formerly that was not the case. I'll move this one out of the way, select all of those, and you can see that they're all gray right now. But as soon as everything comes into alignment, then one of those becomes available and I can now do that in bulk, change all of those fields all at one time. So a lot, a lot of the times that is exactly what I am doing. I'm simply just repositioning them all on the left right there. If I wanted to affect their uh, their width, I have the handle, but just to show you my point, here is what you can do. If I aligned those all on the top, notice that all of the values became available. So if I wanted all of them to be, let's say 50 now, I'm able to make all of them 50 in terms of their height. I'm just going to drag this one down select all of those and then use my spacing values right here in order to space those back out. So it's a really quick bulk modification that you can do. And boy, this really applies to everything. With all of these selected, I can right click and I can get my conditional formatting and any conditional formatting I put on all of these will be affecting, will affect all of them in bulk. Just remember that with conditional formatting in this particular case, if I had any individual rules, this is going to, uh, in one fell swoop, overwrite all of them. So while it's not always the best with conditional formatting, note that it is certainly possible. I'll put them true and I'll give them a fill color of, uh, let's say, a dark red and we'll change it to white right there. But this will, in bulk, go on all three of those so that when I'm in browse mode, there they are. It's all at one time. Those bulk changes work really well when you want to do a lot of things quickly and it's all over the place in FileMaker. It would take me probably an hour or more just to show you all the different areas. Just remember, think to yourself, can this be a bulk operation if I want to affect more than one item? Usually you can. All right, for tip number nine, this one, it is something that you inevitably end up doing all the time on most any database. Just hook up a startup and a shutdown and do it the first thing on the file. You almost always, always, always have a startup and a shutdown routine, just even one script step that you need. And it looks like this. You're going to go up to the uh, file menu and we're going to look at our file options. Once that comes up, we of course are going to hook those up. Without any scripts in this solution, I don't even have to have them. I'm going to go to script triggers and we're going to hook up both of these, the on first and the on last. That is our startup and our shutdown. We don't have to have the scripts. We can actually make them right now. So we will click on first window open. We will just click plus and we will just call this startup or on open window if you want, say OK, click OK, and click OK. Click the on window close, 
We'll create a new one, call that shutdown, and say OK, and say OK, and there we go, and we're done. And that's it. Now from this point forward, when you're in working on your scripts, you at least have your startup and your shutdown, and whatever you put in here is going to run when the file opens, and on shutdown, this is the script that's going to run when it closes. And that's just pretty much the easiest thing to do ever, because you're going to end up creating these anyway. For tip number 10, it follows on with our startup script, and that is always include a server-side bypass. So since your startup is going to run, and most, most everything that runs in your startup is for the client, it's for the user, it's setting up the environment of how the software is going to work and run. But... A lot of the things that you're going to do with regards to data are going to be running, in many cases, server-side scripts because the data is on the server and the server can run things much quicker. If you need information about server-side scripts, go ahead and look up my videos on FileMakerMagazine.com. You can use the search and search for server-side scripts or just search the web. You'll find all kinds of information. But what does that look like? We are just simply going to put in an if condition and then we are going to put a exit script right there. And on this if condition, all we're going to do is we are going to use one of FileMaker's functions. That is it, get platform, get system platform. I believe right there is what it's going to be. And I believe what we're going to do, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Let me see, uh, right words, no, left words is what it's going to be. Left words. And we're looking at the get system platform number of words, and it may be equal to server like that. Uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and open up the documentation. We'll find out what it exactly is since I'm doing this on the fly. I want to make sure you know exactly what it should be. Uh, my fault. It's not the get system platform. I was thinking uh, Macintosh Windows for some reason when I started that off. It is get application version. We are interested in what version or what environment is the FileMaker is being run within. So we can see right here, I opened up the FileMaker help right here, and we can see that the get application version returns these things right here. Pro web publishing server example right here. So you can see that our example is telling us right here that it's going to return Pro 1901. So we we'll return pro. So we are interested in this one right here, server. So if we use that over in our calculation, we can say if the left words of the get application version is equal to server, then what we're going to do is we're going to bypass that whole startup. And that's really all there is to it right here. This is going to be somewhere within the very start of your startup script because you don't need to run a rest of the stuff which will uh, you know, make my uh, UI pretty set up things for the UI environment. We don't want that to run on the server. It doesn't need to. We want to bypass. And for tip number 11, this is actually a little pet peeve of mine. Please, please, please investigate and use the auto sizing or the anchoring. There are so many FileMaker databases that I see that never even use this simple in-your-face option. It's right there. We'll go into layout mode. I will select most everything here, and we will then deselect all of these items so that we can work with those. Get rid of that and at least have these right here. So the way that the anchoring is going to work, let's just move these over in line. There we go. Hospital isn't even there. Zip, that goes right there. And we'll just left align those right there and size them out. I use shortcut keys for those, by the way. But auto sizing, it's right here. Please just use it. It's so easy to figure out all of this anchoring. So right now the default is to the top and to the left, but you can always anchor things to the right and the bottom, or you can turn them all off. In fact, for a iPhone design, it's very nice once you've got the size of your layout sized to what you want. So let's say it's a smaller iPad or iPhone. You don't even have to have all of these turned on. You can turn them off. And what will happen is with all of your items not anchored to any edge, they will float within the middle of your screen, meaning no, how, no matter how big you make it, that's where they will go. You want these to anchor to the bottom? Go ahead and just select everything and anchor it to the bottom. 
And now go into browse mode and you'll see that as I drag down, those should go down. Oh, actually, is there a layout part that, ah, my layout is way too big. So we'll select my body right there. I'll go into my height, do my little trick of just put in a one and it will automatically shrink everything up. That was the problem that I was having. And now it will anchor those down to the bottom. So as I drag down, they will go. This, this anchoring is so awesome. I can't believe how many FileMaker databases I see that don't take advantage of the fact that you can make your FileMaker layout work like software should work when users resize the windows. So please take advantage of the auto sizing, even if you don't think it's a tip. Okay, and our final tip, tip number 12 for this holiday season is use a developer custom function. It is so advantageous for you as the developer to know that with peace of mind, you can put things on a layout and have them automatically hide or have certain scripts act in certain ways based on you being logged in versus somebody else. And your developer script or your developer custom function can be as simple as just one single line of code. Let's take a look at that. I'll bring up the data viewer and we can see right here, I've already created a function and it is right there get account privilege set name. And this is how simple your developer function can be. I have one that I use in all of my solutions. You can get it in any of the technique files that I've been providing for over a decade. It can be as simple as this. I'm going to copy the result from this and I'm going to put in an equals and put full access. Of course, I need that in quotes right there. And we can see right there, if get account privilege set equals full access, you are a developer account. Otherwise, you are not, and that not is really useful. I'm going to copy this, just go right over to my manage, go to my custom functions right there, open that up, and that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to put into any FileMaker solution. I'm just going to call it developer, or you can copy and paste this. Nothing else is needed in terms of parameters, but get account privilege set equals full access, and then we click OK. You can do this right here. You can choose to say only accounts assigned full access privileges. Of course, all this is returning is a true or a false, so that you're not revealing any information, so it's no big deal if you leave this set to all accounts. So we say OK, and now in the rest of our solution, we can use that one custom function all over the place. You've seen me do it in my other videos. If I don't want this field to be seen, I am going to go over to the fourth area, the data tab, and under the behavior, I'm going to hide this object when not developer. And that's it. That's how easy it is. In this case, because I am the developer, I'll take the inverse off that not. And now when I go into browse mode, it does not hide for me. And if it was the inverse, not developer, it would hide and would not show for any other user other than a full access account. And that is just absolutely wonderful. Go into your scripts and your scripts can run. Uh, you have any condition you want. If developer, then do this stuff. Or you flip it and you say, if not developer, meaning it's anybody who is not the developer, you're going to do this stuff. Just really, really useful in terms of being able to control your environment versus the environment that the user is going to use because you need to set things up for you as well. I hope in this video you've been able to pick up at least a few new things for this holiday season. If it's not the holiday season, of course, the tips are still just as good as they were when it was the holiday season. I'd like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development, and until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.